What's up YouTube? Uh, back in the studio and we're going to be talking to you today about the differences between Vendor Central and Seller Central. Talking a little bit about what I've learned uh, over my course of working on uh, the Amazon platform. Some of the pros and cons of each and kind of just dig into uh, what they both are so you can have a little bit more knowledge uh, going into this conversation with Vendor Central and Seller Central and how to deal with each. A lot of people don't know exactly what platform they're selling on when it comes to Amazon. You don't know how many conversations I've had with brands. Uh, they're like, we're selling on Amazon. Uh, and for me, it's always been, I still need to push the conversation further to know exactly what that means. Are you on Vendor Central? Are you on Seller Central? Are you on Amazon Handmade, Amazon Custom? Uh, there's Amazon Launchpad. There's a million different platforms to sell on Amazon. Vendor Central and Seller Central are, are the two main ways to sell on Amazon. That's why we're going to dig into those. But really, when someone says they're selling on Amazon, I need to know more. So Vendor Central, we're going to start there, is an invite-only platform. Uh, there is Vendor Express for all the Amazon experts out there that are watching this. Uh, Vendor Express is no longer there. That was an option to get into the Vendor Central side or the retail side on your own without an invite. But we're back to Vendor Central. And Vendor Central is uh, called Amazon Retail by people that work at Amazon. So think of Think of Amazon Retail or Vendor Central as that traditional business relationship, that B2B business relationship. Uh, Amazon's typically buying from the brand or the manufacturer at a wholesale rate uh, and then selling again on Amazon. And if you're on the Amazon platform, you're going to see it will say uh, sold by and fulfilled by Amazon. And that's when you know it's a product being sold through Vendor Central. So the, the, the problem with the Vendor Central uh, model is that it's it's Amazon's product. They're buying it from you, uh, listing and selling it. That can also be part of the pros. You know, it's an easy button uh, in a lot of ways because you're just putting product on a pallet and shipping it off to Amazon. But let's talk about some of the details, the pros and the cons of this platform specifically. So it's invite only. We know that it's specifically uh, for brands that are already existing, already known. Amazon's reaching out to brands that are already doing well off the platform and asking them either because their products are doing well on Amazon or off of Amazon saying, we wanna buy your product and sell it on Amazon. If you're not doing well, or you're a new brand, you're probably not gonna get this invite. So Vendor Central isn't really there for those new and upcoming brands, it's for, it's for brands that have already been doing well, Amazon's already noticed you, and Amazon wants to take a chance on selling your product. Sometimes this is great if you have a really big product that like uh, fulfilling yourself uh, or shipping would be extremely expensive, think like, uh, bicycles, uh, think bigger, large, uh, like garden rakes, items like that that might not be easily shippable. You could sell them to Amazon at a wholesale rate, which would be a good relationship, a good business move, and not have to worry about any of the logistics. This can be a catch-22 though sometimes because they've made a relationship with you, they've asked to buy your products, maybe they made an initial order for you and that first agreement to come start selling on Amazon, but let's say those items didn't move and Amazon's not making a purchase for more items, and you're getting close to that out of stock range, but they're not making a new purchase order, you can't just decide to send more into stock it. You need to wait on Amazon to request that order from them. This can be bad because you're not allowed to be proactive. You're not allowed to, uh, to believe in your brand to do better than it's done. Amazon kind of did that at the beginning, and now they're just waiting to see what happens. So, a lot of brands are kind of coming from that vendor central relationship that that 50% wholesale margin, so to speak, or that easy button, and migrating over to a seller central experience, which can be a mixture of using Amazon's best, but still taking more control over what's gonna happen on Amazon by bringing that in-house. And instead of selling to Amazon at 50% margin, uh, we're gonna sell directly to the consumer through Amazon. Uh, we're gonna have to manage a few more things, and we're gonna go into what seller central looks like, but there's a lot of vendors that are going from this initial relationship with Amazon four, five, six years ago when Amazon was first getting started to wanting to take control of that themselves and go, on, go and sell to customers on Amazon through Seller Central. One of the main reasons I think brands need to move from Vendor Central to Seller Central, uh, and I even believe in a hybrid approach, but one of the main reasons is that they can't reach their customers. So a customer buys a product uh, from, let's say, Landlocked, which is a company I own. 
And if I'm selling my product to Amazon, the customer reaches out to Amazon and Amazon's gonna say, I can refund that for you or return it, no hassles. Uh, but they're not going above and beyond to create a relationship with that customer. They're not gonna respond to negative reviews and you can't do it either because you're selling to Amazon. They're not gonna go above and beyond to send them a replacement or try to find a size that works best for them or maybe even create something that doesn't exist for that customer if you wanna go the extra mile. For a lot of brands, this holistic approach is becoming bigger and bigger. They need to think about how they're talking to their customers on Amazon in the same way they're talking to them on social media or their website or whatever channel or platform that they're on. By bringing the brand in-house and selling it through Seller Central and being direct, they have more control over their experience their interactions with their customers, um, and can do a better job of policing, managing, and representing their brand on the platform. So Vendor Central being the comfortable platform for a lot of brands and manufacturers that have always been in B2B, it's, it's what they know. Tell me what you want, pay for it, I'll send you a pile of the stuff, you put it on your shelves and you sell it. But moving to Seller Central financially makes more sense. Uh, you have to learn a little bit more to how to use the Amazon platform, but it's leaving a lot of money on the table uh, by not being on Seller Central. So we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna give you guys an example of a client I work with uh, where we use the Vendor Central and the Seller Central model uh, to get the best out of our program. Uh, this, cli this client is called Guardian Bikes. Uh, I'm, I'm their marketing partner uh, with Marknology. We help them on the Amazon platform. Uh, Guardian Bikes was on the Shark Tank uh, TV show. Mark Cuban invested in them. Um, and thought they were a great idea. It's this client, uh, this client has a product called the Sure Stop Braking System. What it does is it evenly applies uh, brakes to the front and backs of bicycles with one handle. It's great. And it's a super popular product, but they had never been on the Amazon platform before. So they were reached out to by Amazon Launchpad, and uh, this was before I started working with them. And Amazon Launchpad was gonna help them uh, get on the platform, kind of give them a little bit of a boost, uh, but the Launchpad program is through Vendor Central. What that means is they had to wait on the bikes to get in stock from Amazon. There was a launch date, Launchpad was gonna kind of create this, uh, this buzz around the launching. And with that buzz, we would hopefully get a good jump start on Amazon. Uh, but we already had products in stock, we were kind of just waiting. So while we were waiting on Vendor Central to kind of stock up on all these bikes, because we were waiting on them to make POs, uh, this is when I came in the picture. And before that date, we, we launched a Seller Central store that we could then stock and control the inventory levels so that whenever uh, Vendor Central was ready to go, we were ready to back that up with our own stock on Seller Central. The moral of the story is, Vendor Central was taking a long time. We had to wait on Amazon to make this purchase order. We had to wait on the bikes to get in stock. We kind of had to wait on uh, the stock levels from what they wanted to show up. And we also saw that some of the bikes sold out before Amazon made another purchase order to get more bikes on the way. So Seller Central was something I recommended to them that we could stock the bikes, even using fulfillment by Amazon, which is Amazon's own warehouse system. But we chose what bikes we wanted to be in stock, how many of each, what colors were popular, and we backed up the system so that whenever Vendor Central sold out or they had yet to get the bikes in stock, we also had Seller Central up, ready to go, and always had our bikes available for the customers. Guardian Bikes had a killer year. Uh, we're already making goals for 2019. We're down the road with that, but we're, we're set up, we're ready to launch some new product and kind of hit Amazon in a new way now that we have both of these platforms. Uh, performing at a high speed. So that's just one story of how we're using both platforms. Um, using the Launchpad to kind of get us that boost, but then having Seller Central to really back up, control, talk to our customers, and make sure we're always in stock. Let's talk about Seller Central, some of the pros and cons, why vendors and brands are moving to Seller Central, and what we can really do with that platform to leverage it. So on Seller Central, it's not the easy button. Not like Vendor Central is an easy button either, but with Seller Central, you really need to know what you're doing. So some of the main things I think that we need to focus on is you have to cover the fees, the fees of storage, the fees of owning the account, the fees of advertising on the platform. Um, more of that re relies on you and your account and your management to make sure that it's working well. Something I recommend, and it has to do with why I'm in business to do this, but you need a professional, either someone that's in-house, someone that knows Amazon, someone that can walk you through what it means to be on Seller Central and how to leverage it properly. But 
with all things, there's a pros, there's pros and cons. And with Seller Central, by being able to be in more control of your fees and your stock levels and your advertising and your flexibility around that, you get to talk to your customers more. You get to be more proactive on the things you can do to make your listings really pop. Uh, you, can, you can have more control over what you're doing on the platform and ultimately that's what we want. To make the experience the best, to make your brand the best on the platform and ultimately create an experience that's your brand regardless of where people are at. One thing that's big about Seller Central that Vendor Central uh, sellers really like is the ability to control your pricing. Uh, a lot of vendors come to me and they're just freaking out and they're like, what's going on? Why is my pricing all the way down here? And that's because when Amazon creates a relationship with you in the beginning, they, they agree on a price with you that they're buying it. But that doesn't mean they're stuck to that price. People might call that price minimum advertised pricing. That's where you, you don't want your bike, let's say in this example, to ever go below $200. But if Amazon's not getting it to sell at $200, they're going to lower that price. And then all of a sudden, your bike on the platform might be 175 and all of your other distributors and people off of Amazon are having to sell at 200, they're gonna be pissed, right? So with Seller Central, you can have more control over your pricing, you're setting your pricing, you don't have to rely on Amazon, and ultimately, in another way, having more control over your brand. If you don't know a lot about Amazon, you might think that selling to Amazon through Vendor Central or that retail relationship is the only way you can get Prime or FBA. That's just not the case. Um, FBA is fulfillment by Amazon and even on the Seller Central side you can sell your own products but enroll in a program called FBA where you take your products send them into Amazon's warehouse and then Amazon will fulfill them just like they would on the Vendor Central side. I'm sure this is a lot of information but that's why I'm trying to put content out there for you guys to explain some of these differences talk about the details uh, get into some of the scenarios that we might have um, in this instance, on the Seller Central side, you could be selling as landlocked, fulfilled by landlocked. That means I'm selling, I'm Amazon, or on Amazon, I'm the store that's selling to you, and I'm also the one that's shipping it to you. I have a lot more control over like the customers, who's getting it, how fast they're getting, um, but I could also use Amazon's fulfillment services and be landlocked, fulfilled by Amazon. I think that's the, that's the best model if we have to pick one because I'm selling and still interacting with my customers and can reach out to them and talk to them and fix their problems if there are any, uh, or celebrate in the wins when they send me a message that says how thankful they are for their product. But I'm still using Amazon's massive system, discounted uh, warehousing and shipping that they've developed and reaching all those prime customers. So we've talked about pricing, we've got logistics on the Seller Central side, we're able to en engage with the customers through messaging, follow-up emails. Uh, we also have advertising, which is a big thing that Seller Central has an advantage over than the Vendor Central side. We can be more flexible with the ads, uh, and ads might be if you've ever been on Amazon and you type something into the search bar and you see something that comes up that says sponsored on it, or maybe there's an ad at the top of the page or the bottom right of the page. Uh, there's literally hundreds of placements for ads on Amazon. Seller Central just gives us more control over the types of ads we want to use to reach our customers on that platform. It's a big way that Amazon makes money, uh, but it's also a great way for you to get your brand recognized. Uh, Google PPC, Facebook ads, all these things have been out a really long time, and there's a lot of people that are very familiar with those. Uh, but in my early days of consulting on Amazon, it was in the advertising space that I was able to quickly outperform marketing agencies that have been doing advertising in Google in these areas for years and years and years, but just weren't paying attention, paying attention sorry, to the small differences on the Amazon platform. So Amazon advertising is a big part of this ecosystem and Seller Central has the best, most robust program out there. So this is a little bit 101, but I also wanted to cover the basics of what it costs to have both of these. To have a Vendor Central account, you're only just getting paid whenever they make an order for your items. On the Seller Central side, you do have to manage more fees. You've got the $39.99 subscription a month to sell, but let's be honest, if, if you're scared about $40, you probably shouldn't be in business on Amazon. Besides that, you've got the cost it's gonna take you in advertising, and you should have a sizable budget for that. Um, but besides that, there aren't any other fees to sell on Amazon besides your monthly subscription. Another thing is the FBA. We've talked about shipping or selling it, like who's shipping it for you. I wanna talk about the limits to what you need to get started. And a lot of people think they have to send a whole pallet or a whole caseload. Um, whenever I'm talking to my, my clients, my partners, I'm really encouraging them like, let's just start small. Let's get you know 25 units in, 50 units in. 
Uh, let's see, let's get that process, let's get familiar with it. Well, how do we have to prep the items, label the items? And I don't wanna get all into that, we'll cover that in another episode. But on Seller Central, because you're in control, you can send as many or as little as you want. If you wanna send one, be my guest. I'm not advocating for either or, I'm just here to educate you on the differences between the two platforms and so that you can know the best way that you should position your brand on the platform. Uh, take this knowledge, do with it as you want, but my advice would be to, to be on Seller Central if you have to choose one or the other. If you're already on Vendor Central, maybe a hybrid model is best for you, but whatever you're gonna do, be informed, know what you're doing on Amazon so that you can have goals to achieve the best you can out of that platform um, and that channel that you're on Amazon and maximize that. So we're not covering all the ways to sell on Amazon, but we've covered Vendor Central, we've covered Seller Central, we've learned a little bit about a Shark Tank client that's using both uh, and, why, and why they're doing that. And I hope that this has been helpful for you to learn a little bit more about the two platforms. I look forward to talking to you more. Thanks for watching YouTube. Comment below with topics you'd like to hear about. I'd love to cover those as well. Please subscribe. Talk to you soon.